What is happening, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Chad Sports Talk. You don't know my name is Chad, and we take a dive in the world of sports. This is my week eight preview video for the NFL action. And the last week, I actually went nine and four, which was decent. Um, I am losing the, the kickoff Thursday night and closing Monday night games. So I'm hoping I'll repeat that fact. But, you know, you know, getting out in those four losses, I think, seems to be my typical MO right now. Uh, I'll be a few more games this week because only two teams have to buy. So let's go ahead and kick it off with tonight's action between Green Bay and Arizona and an epic showdown in NFC West Divisional Leaders. And this one has a lot of interesting uh, twists and turns in this. Uh, Green Bay is going to be out Devontae Adams and uh, Lazard at receiver due to COVID protocols. And the Cardinals just uh, recently announced that J.J. Uh, Watt's having season-ending surgery on the shoulder. So that's going to hurt that defensive front line for Arizona. But they do get Challenge Jones back, who was a beast against Tennessee. And let's see how this one kind of plays out. Uh, Green Bay is still, still Aaron Rodgers' team. Uh, he still has Jones in the backfield. He's still got Cobb, which he brought back. So Cobb needs to, you know, earn, I guess, earn his spot right now to, to fill the void. So, uh, and, but the Arizona's offense is still the same. Then they got, you know, Zach Ertz as, as a tight end. And they struggled a little bit. Him and Murray did last week, but they did hook up for a touchdown. So I can see that combination blossoming more. And it's hard for me to go against Green Bay. Um, for me, I see this game as a 50-50 game because of Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is a, is a signing factor in this one because it, it's one of those things where I can't uh, go against Rodgers again. He's burned me already this season. You know, I think right now at the time of this video, the Cardinals are favored by 6.5. Um, I have to give the edge to Green Bay to upset Arizona. I mean, and I think right now, throughout the, the landscape of ESPN and all the other, you know, Fox and, and all the other, you know, pro procrastinators of this, this is kind of either way. They are not giving Green Bay a little bit of shot because they don't have Devonta Adams as their leading receiver for Green Bay. But like I said, it's Aaron Rodgers. You, it's hard to not pick him. He'll find ways to uh, pick apart a defense. And... Uh, I could see that happening here, and I think this is the time frame. I think Arizona's finally going to have that uh, winning season or undefeated season end. But it's not going to be the last of the Cardinals who are here. So, uh, like I said, Green Bay is an upset. Then we move on to Sunday, and the first game on the, on the dock would be Carolina at, at Atlanta. Now, Carolina's going the wrong direction. Um, they've been losing a lot. Uh, they actually benched Darnold last week for uh, P.J. Walker, uh, but he pretty much had the same success. But I can foresee Darnold have a much better game, but the lack of a running, tack, running attack because of Noah McCaffrey is hindering that Panthers offense. They were able to do stuff against Minnesota, but after that, they've been they've been they flatlined. And I don't think it's McCaffrey's issue. I think it's just finding ways to... Limited issue, uh, uh, living the, the, the uh, uh, stress put on Dar uh, Darnold to be the, the savior. He's one of these quarterbacks that needs a compliment running back to kind of help him out. Once they have a status running game, he's very proficient. Because now defense is kind of, you know, open up and he's able to pick him apart. But Atlanta's got Matt Ryan. And... And he also got that amazing tight end as well, who's who stepped up recently the past couple of games. And Koo, he's he's no slacker at the kicking game. So for this one, I see Atlanta wedge, edging Carolina for the win. Uh, then Miami at Buffalo, uh, this is not going to be close. Uh, the Bills continue to stampede past their division foe and just easily cruise to a victory. Then we'll do San Francisco at Chicago. Uh, yeah, this one's going to be a little difficult for me as well. Uh, you might, and some of you have already deduced that, yes, I am a Bears fan. Um, but the 49ers uh, last week kind of fell flat against the Colts. Um, I will kind of put some of that on the weather because one of the last plays of the game was Jimmy Garoppolo threw a pass, and as it went to the top arc, a slurry motion actually slipped out his hands. 
but the uh, Bears offense is in shambles. It, they can't, the, the all I can't stop nothing. Um, they don't have a scheme that matches Justin Fields' uh, abilities. Fields spends too much time getting sacked. Uh, it, it's just there's so many things wrong with this Bears offense that you know, as as a Bears fan, it makes you very very upset. There's there's some potential there, but uh, San Francisco's got too many weapons on both sides of the ball. Really, uh, I can see Bosa having a good game against that Bears O line, and I think uh, Garoppolo should be able to uh, effectively disseminate the ball between his receivers. It continues, and I think the Bears could both well, continue on this game, and San Francisco's going to win. Then you got Pittsburgh at Cleveland. This is a key battle in AFC North, <laughs> and the winner has to keep pace with Cincinnati and Baltimore. Seems to be running away with this division. Uh, Baker Mayfield wants to play. Uh, he's been sidelined because of that uh, injured shoulder that he will need surgery on. But I think Baker's being too arrogant uh, of his of himself and of his 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 abilities. Uh, Cleveland has shown they don't need him, which is kind of you know wrong to kind of say because Case Keenum did do a decent job, especially since uh, Johnson came out of nowhere, the third stringer, and said, "Okay, Chubb who or Hunt who? I mean, I'm here. We got this." So the the, def, uh, the offensive scheme is actually built pretty well in that aspect. So I think any quarterback can actually you know, be uh, sufficient in Cleveland. So I think for Baker's uh, health and safety, he should sit. Um, because if he plays, that Pittsburgh defense is going to go hunting. They'll make sure they put Baker back out and inquire be even a worse injury. And be out longer. Um, I really think Baker should get that surgery now, but I understand he's trying to fight for that, that extension, um, trying to prove his worth as a franchise quarterback, um, which I th- really think he is. He is the franchise quarterback for Cleveland, and he's the right fit for Cleveland. But um, I, I just don't think if if he goes, if he does start, I think uh, the, the, the def- uh, Pittsburgh defense will take care of the issue. Of, of Baker Mayfield, take him out of the game, put Keenan back in. Um, I give a little bit more credit to the Steelers' defense than I do Denver's. So I think Steelers will be able to contain Cleveland and be able to escape with a victory. I think Philly, Detroit, um, this is an interesting matchup. Uh, Jalen Hurst and, and Jerick Off are two quarterbacks are decent, uh, just not doing playing on seems like really bad teams right at this point in time uh, but I think that the Phillies defense is exactly what the Lions are looking for because what they did at SoFi against the Rams is what they need to do against Philadelphia and they continue that momentum and they continue that they will ground the Eagles and get their first victory Tennessee Indianapolis yeah, here's a rematch and Wentz is starting to perform much like he did in Super Bowl run under the guise a uh, guide of Frank Reich. Things are starting to click on that on that offense. The defense is a lot better. I think a lot of people give him credit for. Um, last time they faced King uh, uh, Derrick Henry, he didn't rush a lot. You know, it's just you know Tannehill is able to pick apart that secondary a little bit. But since like Carson Wentz is actually doing, you know, being much more efficient with his offense, I think the Colts would do the same thing again with King Henry and kind of keep him grounded instead of, you know, leading the charge from front. I see the Colts winning the rematch. Next two games I'm going to spend too much time on, so it'll be pretty quick. Um, Bengals visit the Jets. Bengals keep the Jets grounded. For the win, and then the Rams go to H Town, take on the Texans, and that garbage team, garbage fire of a team right now. And the Rams will continue the uh, Texans well in the blowout. Move on to something a little more interesting. Uh, New England will visit the Chargers, uh, so Mac Jones will take on Justin Herbert and SoFi. This should be a, a big battle between these two. 
and um, the, both these defense are actually, you know, quite decent. I mean, New England's been very uh, stout defense, especially in that red zone. So they definitely, you know, tighten up in that short field. Chargers um, have abilities to be able to do that. They've also shown the abilities not to really uh, uh, protect themselves from the deep threat. So it, it's it's just one of those things you kind of take apart. But um, the Chargers' offense should be a lot better than what the Patriots have uh, faced. The Patriots would not do the same thing they, like they get against the Jets. Um, so they can take that and just throw that out there. This be more similar to the game they did against Dallas. It's going to be very close, uh, probably back and forth. And I think, uh, much like that Dallas game, Chargers win an OT. Now Jacksonville will go up to Seattle. Uh, the Jags finally, you know, back you know, off the bye. They got their first one this season, so they got that little monkey off their back. But now they go visit the 12th man and deal with that crowd noise. Which is, I'm thinking, a little bit uh, something they haven't been really used to. And Geno Smith has shown he could be efficient at times as Russell Wilson's replacement. But he's also made some very costly mistakes. I've hindered drives, uh, cost a you know, turnover ball a few times. Seattle's defense has also done some some uh, questionable antics on defense, some costly penalties that kept drives alive. That hurt them, especially last week against the Saints. That let them continue their drive for the game-winning field goal. Um, but this one, like I said last week, <laughs> Cheadle Smith will get his first win as a Seahawks starter. Dang gummit, this should work this week. And then you got Washington going up to Denver. Uh, Heineken has been a surprise for uh, Washington season. However, he has made some questionable decisions, especially last week against Green Bay. So running completely in for a touchdown, he gave himself up and was short. Uh, but Roger has been much better. Uh, but the Broncos' defense has been performing much better than the Washington's defense. I think that is going to be the key is the defense. And right now, a bit more faith in the Broncos' defense than I do Washington's. Washington's has not lived up to the hype. Um, I put them on the pedestal. Uh, I know a few other people put them on the pedestal. Apparently, the pedestal was made of paper because it came crashing down that week one. So, Broncos with a victory at home. A huge matchup of NFC South teams. Tampa Bay Buccaneers will head to New Orleans to take on the Saints. Uh, Winston has continued to improve as a starter for the, uh, the Saints. He's actually had zero turnovers in four straight games. That was a little unheard of from uh, James Winston. But I think that streak will be put to the test against this Bucks team that's very uh, ball hawkish, and they love to make the turnovers. But I also think Brady was struggling against his defense. Of course, I said that last week against the Bears, and he pretty much torched them, but uh, Nola is not Chicago. And they should be able to force some few turnovers from Tom Brady. Uh, another question is, can the Bucks contain Kamara? I mean, he was key last week for their victory against the Saints, or I mean against the Seahawks. And I think with limited success, they will be able to at least minimize the effect of Alvin Kamara. They won't be completely contain him, but if you minimize his effect, this was a this will hamper the Saints' offense because if he's not doing what he can, but Kamara is one of the dual threat uh, personnel. So if you stop in the run, he's got to stop in the pass. When you stop in the pass, he's going to get you in the run. So I think the Bucks' defense will be able to minimize the effect of both ends, and the Bucks will be able to escape New Orleans with a W. Then Sunday night, you got the Dallas Cowboys visiting the Minnesota Vikings. Dallas has had uh, coming off their bye week. And the question is, is Dax calf still better? Um, at the time of this video, he's still listed as questionable. You take it from me, a calf injury is not something to take lightly. It does take some time. And I figured, you know, a week maybe, but if he's still kind of, you know, borderline, it actually took me a little while to fully recover from my calf injury. And I was actually out of action for a week, but it took about another two weeks for it to completely heal overall um but uh because if he goes out there he could 
aggravate that injury, or you actually make it worse. Or he can injure something else to compensate for that. He's already got that bum ankle anyways because of the surgery. The issue with the shoulder, just slightly, I mean. But with that calf, you know, if you do that, okay, now he's going to do something on the other leg because he's putting uh, more weight on that leg to compensate for what's happening on the bad leg. And that's something they don't need. Uh, Dallas should rest him at least for one more week because you got to look at the lead they got. In, the, in that NFC least, it's just pretty much Dallas and everyone else. Everyone else is like two and five, and Dallas is five and one. So they don't need the win really to for divisional purposes. Maybe they want the win to try to get that you know that 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 first round by. But you also got to look. Okay, you got to take on Tampa Bay, Green Bay, Arizona, and, and the Rams. So that's a really loaded loaded. Uh, uh, echelon right now for the NFC. And then you gotta look at their backups. I think that's the question mark. Um, <laughs> because they have Cooper Rush, who has not had a snap since 2017. And Will Greer, who had four interceptions and two appearances last year with the Panthers. So, they don't have very uh, reliable backups, I can say right on top of my head, with NFL experience. Uh, Greer has shown that he was actually a pretty good quarterback at West Virginia. Uh, Cooper Rush was, I think, believe he was Central Michigan. Um, but the the question marks at, at quarterback, uh, rather you put Dak a ninja Dak in, or an inexperienced backup. Um, with that, I'm ten, I'm leaning towards Minnesota for this one. Uh, but for Minnesota to win this one, Kirk Cousins has to play lights out. He cannot be ineffective. He cannot miss miss his receivers. He cannot throw the picks. Um, he's pretty much almost got to be perfect against Dallas. And that could be hard to do. But um, I'm going to lead towards Minnesota. I'm sure this one's going to bite me. But... Uh, like I said, I'll give I'll give Minnesota the edge in this one, and then Monday Night Football, kind of a lackluster type of game there. Uh, the Giants visit the Chiefs. The Chiefs, there's just a very inconsistent uh, mess of a, of a team right now. Uh, their defense is just a slice of Swiss cheese out there. Uh, Mahomes is trying to do too much. Uh, offensive line's brand new, not really doing what he's supposed to do. The running tech's not really there. Uh, receivers are either not catching or not holding on to the ball or they end up tipping the ball up and it gets turned over and, you know, goes for interception. So there's a lot of things that Chiefs have to do to rectify their situation. You know, they have to, you know, shore up the defense. They have to get that running attack going. And they probably have to switch up the play style a little bit of Mahomes. Um, he needs to stop trying to do everything for him. That he he's the reason why. The Chiefs need to do stuff. I mean, he, he has to be, he can't be the focal point. He needs to share the load. I think that's one of the, the things that the defense prior was able to do, was able to, okay, so we caught this big play. No big deal. We got Mahomes. He'll handle it. And that was the Chiefs' defensive plan is being to have a overly effective offense. But now that the offense has sputtered, the defense's issues have risen to the top. Everyone's been picking them apart. So this one is going to be uh, kind of, you know, something that Chiefs need to do to kind of help uh, get their season back on track and back in the playoff hunt. Um, but the G-Men, there's no, no slouches. And they can take advantages of miscues. Um, they produced last week against Carolina. I know Carolina's the same, not the same as Kansas City. Um but it's just one of those things that, you know, Daniel, Daniel Jones has become a very effective quarterback. Um, they're using, you know, they have a run attack without Barkley. So, and the defense is, is decent enough, you know, give teams headaches. And I have a feeling this is going to happen again. Um, the G-Men, they will give the Chiefs all they can handle. And then some. Um, I do think this is going to be a lot closer game than a lot of people think.
Chiefs are favored right now. Time this video at nine and a half. I think it's going to be a lot closer than that. Um, so if you're a bet man, I think you can, you know, take the Giants for the points, and you should be able to do all right. But um, yeah, it's going to be a lot closer than than people think. Because Mahomes will still do his thing. It's going to be like the game against Washington. Uh, everyone thought it's going to be a blowout, and Washington took it to the Chiefs that first half, and the Chiefs broke away, and Mahomes actually went back to Mahomes old. That's what the Chiefs have to do: go back to Mahomes old. You know, find ways to make him more effective, be able to protect him better, get that running game going. That's going to be key to get him going. Because if you don't get that running game going, and really all on that, you know. Secondary can just sit back there, cover everyone, and makes it harder and harder for Mahomes to uh, do anything. But, um, but like I said, you know, it's going to be a lot closer. But Chiefs are going to win this one. Well, there you go. There are my picks. Uh, let's see if I can, you know, improve slightly from my nine and four. See if I don't get three losses this week. <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, I kind of want to limit my outfit of these, but hey. You know, you got to air so often, just kind of, you know, spice some things, spice some things up. But, hey, just let me know down in the comments below what you think, uh, which matchup or which pick that I chose that you really think I'm, like, way out in left field, um, especially Green Bay, Arizona. Do you continue to get back to Cardinals and being undefeated? Or you find, say, Aaron Rodgers going in, in that streak? Maybe my uh, pick for Dallas, Minnesota, which I think, like I said, could probably bite me. Um, so I, I already called that one where I can probably lose that one already. But anyways, and just let me know what you think. You know, just put down which game you're looking forward towards. And I'll, you know, I'll post that, you know, recap video on Tuesday after the Monday night matchup. And for all those little kiddos out there, be safe this weekend. Enjoy yourselves this, you know, Halloween weekend. And... Make sure you smash that thumbs up for me. Give me a like. Once you do that, you can also hit the subscribe button. Once you subscribe, you hit that bell notification. Let you know next time I post a video. I'll see you next time on Chad Sports Talk.